Hi everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Hope that you are all doing well and having a good week. I have a project to show you today that I am super excited about. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make these vintage button trees on silver platters. I'm gonna give you all the steps from start to finish. Um, so as you jump on, um, say hi, tell me where you're watching from. If you're watching this on replay, let me know that too. Hey Wanda, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, let me know that as well. And I will start at the very beginning and then I will show you step by step how to do this. Okay, so I don't know if you guys remember um, this other project that I did that involved vintage buttons. It was maybe three weeks ago. I can't remember exactly. It was this. I made this vintage button piece of art. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Lynn. Thank you guys for watching. Um, anyways, I got such a great uh, response to this project and honestly, I, I love how this turned out. Um, but the one downside to this is that it is a tree and these buttons are all glued on this. This is painter's drop cloth that I used as my background. So I can't change this around. This is going to be a piece of art that will come out at Christmas time and then it'll probably go away for the remainder of the year. But what I've just made um, can be something that can be all year long because it's not permanent. Okay, so, um, gosh, I started collecting buttons about maybe four years ago, four or five years ago. I don't know how it happened. I just saw some pretty ones and then I was um, really addicted to them and I spent several hundred dollars um, but I made some of the most wonderful Christmas presents that year. I'm, and I showed you two other bracelets last time when I talked about that other tree I showed you. But I made a lot of um, Christmas presents that I gave away to some of the ladies in my Bible study, close friends, my mom. And I just wanted to show you a few others here real quick. So the... Um, the buttons that I that I purchased were put to good use. I bought them at flea markets, at um, like antique booths, that kind, of, those kind of places. Okay, so um, this morning I was thinking about doing a project with these silver trays that I purchased yesterday at um, Goodwill, and I showed them to you in a Facebook Live that I did yesterday. And um, I wanted to do a tree and I was thinking about painting it and then putting the buttons on as if they were ornaments on a tree. But then I remembered, oh my gosh, I'm not a good painter. <laughs> I'm really not. I, can't, I couldn't draw a horse to save my life. Um, so then I started thinking about what if I just put the buttons on to form the shape of the tree. And that's where I got started. So I got out my metallic button collection. Um, and I also got out my white and off-white button collection. And I hopped over to my local Walmart to buy some of these um, small magnetic buttons. I had some of these magnetic buttons already, but they were bigger and they were going to show for a lot of the buttons that I wanted to use. So I purchased this set. Let me show you what it looks like. The buttons are really small. They work perfectly. Um, I got it at Walmart. It was about $4.44, I think and it had 52 buttons in it. So then I just got my glue gun out and I started um, attaching the, let me hold this closer so you can see. I started attaching these little magnet buttons to the, to the back of my buttons. And um, 
a few of my buttons had an issue in that they had a stem let me show you an example that really um, poked out and let's see well this is one I can show you okay here's a perfect example this button right here see how it has this little spot that pokes out where you would attach this button to a piece of clothing well that kind of prevents oops can you guys see that it prevents you from being able to attach one of the magnetic buttons to the back of it so i just got out my hammer and a big old piece of wood and laid my button down and hammered that spot i'll show you and i was able to hammer the these little hooks whoops i wasn't talking and explaining at the same time so it was much easier but anyways you get the point and now and then they were flat or flush with the back of the button and then I could use some hot glue to attach it um, to the back to the little magnetic button some of my buttons look like they're made out of metal but they're actually um, a hard plastic and for those you couldn't hammer them flat so I just used my um, jewelry making clippers and I was able to just cut that piece right off the back so it was flush so I could um, apply my um, hot glue and the, the button. Some of them were just slightly elevated and for those I just glued the button, this, the magnetic button right on the top. Anyways, and you know here's my thought. I have all these beautiful vintage buttons that are just sitting in these um, containers and I'm not appreciating them and when I'm gone I don't think my kids are going to be even remotely interested in a box um, of vintage buttons but if I make a piece of art for our home that they see year after year um, that has some meaning to them then maybe they'll be interested so I feel like my kids are way more likely to want to have this piece of art um, than a box of buttons. So um, the glue that you that you put on there with the um, magnetic buttons is permanent, but um, none of these buttons that I used were sentimental. They weren't my grandmother's buttons. Um, so I didn't have any hesitation to do this. Now, if you inherited your grandmother's button collection, I still think you should try this project mm -hmm. because, like I said, um, what's the chance that your children will want those jars of buttons that your grandmother collected? They don't, they probably won't have any sentimental attachment to them. But if you make something with them that is displayed in your home, then they're much more likely to hang on to them. And, um, and you'll, you can enjoy those beautiful buttons. So that's my thinking on that. No. So after I made this silver one, you know, I can't tell if this is working because I haven't seen any comments or thumbs up or hearts or anything for a while. So if, could somebody um, let me know? Technology is not my strongest uh point anyways um okay so then after i did this one then i decided to use some of my white buttons and i did exactly the same thing i just hot glued these little can you see in the light uh silver magnets or these little magnets to the back of my buttons and i forgot an important step i forgot to tell you Hey Deborah, hey Jean, thank you for letting me know that I'm actually working. Uh, does anyone have any questions? If you do, even if you're watching this on replay, 
Feel free to put your questions in the comments and I will answer after this is all over. Anyways, well, oh, the thing I forgot to tell you. Okay, so I did a live yesterday where I showed you what I got my scores from Goodwill from yesterday. And these two silver trays here were both in pretty bad shape. And um, I have figured out a super easy way to get your silver to look um, decent without having to spend hours polishing. And that is this stuff. This is from a maker studio. I didn't put a link in my comments, uh, in my little blurb to the maker studio website. So if you need that, just let me, just send me a message and I'll get that for you. But this stuff is called furniture cleaner. And um, I just put it on a paper towel. It's actually leaking on my hands. And um, wiped it over the surface and all the, the black tarnish came right off. Then I used this amazing paint that can go on just about any surface. I put two coats of it on these um, two silver platters. Look how bad my paint jug looks. I'm completely a messy, messy, messy crafter. Anyways, this is Little Black Dress. It's Rescue Restore paint, also from a maker studio. And um, it, it gives you really good coverage and it sticks to this silver um, super nice. And this project back here with the stag head on it was done exactly the same way. I cleaned the silver with the furniture polish, with the furniture cleaner, sorry. And then I painted two coats of Little Black Dress Rescue Restore paint on that. So um, this is my project. I hope you like it. If you decide to get some buttons out and to try this project. I would love to see your pictures. If you wanna just put pictures in the comments in this thread, that would be awesome. Or if you wanna um, message me some pictures, that would be great too. I'm sure there's a lot of other ways that you could dress this idea up and make it look even um, better. And I would love to hear those. Um, if you like the kind of projects that I do, which are Typically pretty quick, um, pretty easy. They don't require a ton of different ingredients. They're um, super affordable. These trays cost me $1.99 at Goodwill yesterday. And the buttons I already had, and the buttons were not expensive. I didn't buy any valuable buttons. Um, so quick, easy, affordable, um, they sometimes have something kind of different about them or unique, and I feel like vintage buttons and a silver tray from Goodwill qualify for that, and they require absolutely no artistic ability. So if you like those kind of crafts and you like the black and white and neutral thing that I've been doing a lot of lately, then tell your friends about me. Um, feel free to share this, this video tutorial on your social media. Um, they like to say sprinkle it. So if you did, if you would um, be so kind to sprinkle this, I would appreciate it. Um, and I am going to give you a little preview of the next thing I'm doing before I jump off. So sorry I'm going so long. Let me move everything out of the way so I can actually show you. So yesterday, I showed you how to make this darling um, Christmas tree book. It was super easy, super affordable, no artistic abilities, and I think it turned out pretty dang cute. Um, and it's also the black and white and neutral kind of theme that I am usually attracted to. So today I was out and about picking up a few things at my Goodwill again. And I happened upon this beautiful book. It's about Katherine Hepburn and it's called Me. It had a really busy um, paper cover on it, uh, but I looked underneath to see what the outside of the book looked like. 
and I decided to stretch a little bit. So this afternoon, I'll be doing this project. I'll be making one of these Christmas tree books using this red um, book. I'll be using red and black gel art ink. I'll be using some red and black um, ribbon. And I think I'll be using this stencil uh, or different parts of it. I'm not sure. But anyways, when I have that complete, I will um, share that with you. And um, if you didn't see that, that video tutorial, you can just scroll back a little bit to yesterday and um, check out that video. If you didn't see the one about the, this button tree and you're interested in making something like this, um, scroll back, uh, it, just go to my videos and scroll back maybe three weeks worth. Um, and you should be able to find this one too. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you again very soon. And until then, I will be DIY dreaming up lots more craft projects for you. Have a great day. Thanks.